Welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I have finished my very first Golden Retriever book. <laughs> Golden Retriever book. Please do explain. Well, he is the nicest, most communicative, no judgmental, um, loving, caring main char- male main character ever. And even though he was a big player before, also mm-hmm. the captain of a very famous hockey mm-hmm. team. Okay. And very, very rich and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Still, he doesn't have a past that that deters him from being a good man to this woman. You see, I did a test. Yep. No, I didn't do a test. I saw a TikTok or something like that. But whatever. I saw this thing that explains that if you have like anxiety and you have all of these things that makes you a like a not so healthy person in yourself yeah then you're gonna be attracted by people that gives you very high highs and very low lows which are also not very healthy people Mm. so me whenever you say oh i read a golden retriever he was the best i'm like wow that sounds so boring (laughs) and then realizing in my brain that oh yeah this was that tiktok that i watched (laughs) which says that not attracted to healthy, just want damage, <laughs> want it to be difficult, uh, not happy with things being easy and people being kind and you know, all of that. And and I realized very it came very strongly when you mentioned the characteristics of the golden retriever. I was like, Ugh, that sounds real boring. <laughs> this is literally my first thought. That so, is interesting. So, Welcome to Leah's brain, everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good place to be in. Uh, what can I say? I'm working on it. Hello, therapy. <laughs> but normally, I like very much go towards these grumpy sunshine tropes in my romance books. Mm-hmm. I like but you it. also like communication. I like communication a lot. Mm-hmm. Communication is a big thing for me in my everyday life and when I read. And if there's no communication, I, I like it very angry. Like, what at is... the characters in the books. And while you're like... Mm, I'm like, this don't is not... care. Don't need to talk about <laughs> this. Don't talk about Let's it. Let's all, like, do our own analysis of this without <laughs> verifying that we're actually accurate. And then we'll go on with, like, completely wrong <laughs> assumptions about each other, which will inevitably lead to, to lots of miscommunications and, and misunderstandings later on. But, you know, I'm all good. <laughs> Makes for high highs and low lows and roller coaster up and down, all the happy hormones it sounds and the like sad ones. A lot of work <laughs> happens in that brain of yours. Yeah, it's busy. It's, bu- <laughs> it's very busy. Okay, but this book, this golden retriever book, I haven't because I always read the grumpy man. I love the grumpy man. You know, in Ted Lasso, mm-hmm. is his name Troy Tr? No, it's Roy. Roy. Roy sorry. Kent. Roy Kent. Roy Kent. He is like my favorite man of all time because of his grumpiness. Even though he loves so much, his just exterior is Do just you know grump. But there was a conspiracy theory in season one of Ted Lasso that he was actually like not real, that he was like computer generated because he's so <laughs> the way he looks. <laughs> yeah. And now whenever I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I can see it. It's true. He is. He could be. He could he's be. very job. He could Chiseled. be mm. like a video game kind of character. Like a... But I love him. And my husband loves that I love him because I also draw parallels to what Yoan is like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're sitting they're sitting at the school and the school teacher is like, oh, your niece to this Roy Kent mm-hmm. has been swearing a lot. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know, I don't know why. And she's like, well, today she called this kid like a fucking something, something. And he's like, well, was he being that? And the teacher was like, well, yeah, he was being that. And he's like, well, fucking right that she's like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, thinking back to when Sky was two or three years old and she had to write this on Father's Day little questionnaire at school or she didn't write of course the teachers wrote it and she had to answer Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was what does your dad say the most all the time and she said fucking idiots (laughs) 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 the teachers giggled and they were like why does he call you a fucking idiot no all of the cars outside are fucking idiots (laughs) and the 
disagree. It is true. Tell all us of the cars <laughs> are fucking idiots. I agree <laughs> with this assessment. So even though I normally love to have similar to my husband in the books, this grumpy and then this poppy, fun, nice little social butterfly girl as the girlfriend or wife, because I like myself and I want to read about myself. I don't want to read about myself and my husband. And all I'm the like, time. I'm not like that. I cannot relate. <laughs> Must have <laughs> complex person with too many thoughts. <laughs> Seeking the bad thing and having all of the misunderstandings. It makes me so sad when I read the books that you like. <laughs> I'm like, I understand what they're mean. It's like I'm there all the time. Okay, but you know what? I think that this golden retriever uh, trope is a good one because it doesn't have all of the things that female writers sometimes do wrong, like really generalize men all the time that they don't have feelings that they're you know one word answers that they but uh, we i did find this list and i sent it to you of of all the things that men actually think that we female romance authors get wrong about men and it was hilarious this list so so funny and i was uh, showing bits of it off to to my husband and one of them was like the the man always being in super good shape but never having to go to the gym (laughs) and and jeff's like well channing tatum's doing the good work here (laughs) And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, every time there's an interview with him and they ask him, like, wow, you look great, you're in great shape. He's like, yeah, I feel like shit. Like, uh-huh. And he almost didn't do, like, uh, the last uh, Magic Mike movie because it's, like, a solid year of being in the gym, like, all the time <laughs> and not eating to look like that. Yeah. Like, it is, that's not something you get from your casual 30 minutes a day, you know, like... <laughs> It, it know, twice a week. Twice a week. You know, like, this, this is not going to happen. And I read somewhere... Well, I mean, I, I clearly I am on TikTok a lot more because I keep talking about TikTok now. But there was a TikTok that came up that was like, if you are over the age of 32 or something like that and you don't have a six-pack, it's because you don't actually want one. Because if you wanted one, you would put in the work and you would do the dietary restrictions needed to get one. Like, yeah. if you just say... I want a six pack and you're over a certain age, like, no, you, you'd like one to magically appear, but you're not willing to work for yeah, it. Yeah, you like, have to work for it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, um, I think this, and I find this to be unrealistic. And I find this, there was one, another one on this list that was like, guys being casually five, uh, six foot five. And he's like, yeah. without actually noting how difficult it is in life to be over six foot five. Mm. And all of the challenging, you know, like bonking your head where you go through doors, like mm. all of these things that there are just there that never mentioned when when women write about it. We just wanted the tall man. <laughs> you know, my very first boyfriend was six foot five. Mm-hmm. I was eighteen, like serious boyfriend, and uh, I'm five foot one. Mm-hmm. And so six five and five one are sometimes in these books too, and it's like doesn't make it seem that the relationship height difference is, isn't difficult. No, I, but it's got to be. I mean, it, he's got to have a really sore neck from the kissing, that poor man. Sure. Like the back problem of yeah. having to hunch like that. Yeah. And poor women with their feet in those super high heels all the time to yeah. even get remotely close to their level. It's true. Back. And the not fitting in beds and the not yeah. fitting on couches and the not fitting in cars. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. They don't really touch base on that they just want some tall guy because tall guys are hot but i think there's a there's also a limit where you go from tall to just that slight bit too tall where it's almost just awkward because you're just so very very tall and so very very big (laughs) and i mean i would probably draw the line like i wouldn't want someone who's like where where my neck hurts because i have to look up at them all the time like uh, i mean they're taller than me. My husband's taller than me. My, yeah. Like, soon I'm going to be the smallest one in the family. It's going to happen. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. I mean, luckily, my mom's still shorter than me and my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they claim they're not, but... <laughs> I'm the all... shortest in my family of four kids. I'm the shortest. But um, I was the biggest baby coming out. Hmm. Yeah. means nothing means what nothing. you are when you come out. <laughs> Literally, it means nothing. But oh. yesterday, or two days ago, I was at this play place where the kids were playing, and there mm-hmm. were these two dads there with their sons, and they were giants. 
Mm-hmm. They weren't even just giants as in tall men. They were like beefed like up. Big, big. Big yeah. men. They definitely go to the gym every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're the kind of people where you want to ask them to, to, to please drop the fridge. Like you don't have to hold on to it the whole time. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> and their 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 sons were I don't know four or five and they look so very tiny <laughs> next to the dads. Anyways, so I was sitting in a spot that they were in my eye line, so I was watching them interact with their kids a lot. They look like they're really good dads. And uh, then my daughter is shouting for me, and I had to get up and go past the table, and they got up for whatever reason. And I have never felt actually. <laughs> like a child <laughs> in the presence of any man in my life but walking past these two men I was like hi dad <laughs> you know, like, it's like you could hold their hand it would be up at ear high can, can you put me on your shoulders you know like <laughs> I can't it see, brought can I look my back? mentality back to childhood like I felt like a five-year-old again being next to them yeah so mm-hmm. six or five is not it's always told. as romantic as no. we no, and Fantasize. honestly, and, and the, there was a lot on this list. Like the, they have the body, like body of a Greek god, uh, but they never exercise. Mm. They're the CEO, but they have all the time in the world all the time. Do you know, like, I I have talked about this before <laughs> about the CEO having so much time to meet the girl, or they're meeting the girl on the side, and they have like some side thing. Then they go mm-hmm. into real life, and then they're at work all the time. This is the same with doctors too. Yeah. It's like. Oh yeah, doctor, you're having like all of these hours, and uh, mm-hmm. and, and you're you have, available whenever you're available she calls. Whenever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you pick up the phone all the time, and then you're and you can just drop things and yeah. just go running. Like, <laughs> sorry, my girlfriend called. Sorry. Just gonna pull my hands out of your, <laughs> your chest cavity here, and then go running. I was reading this doctor series recently where he was on call. All of the doctors in all of this, this series were on call in the morning, but still they had all night sex. Mm-hmm. And like, well, that's just irresponsible. Yeah. <laughs> they are surgeons. I expect my Brain doctor surgeon, to be... heart surgeon. <laughs> you need to be awake. You need to be well rested, man. That's it. Putting you on a bedtime. Irresponsible women Irresponsible. I expect my doctors to take better care of themselves. Right. Come on. <laughs> can't just give out advice you need to take your own advice too man exactly so in in that book i actually did i laughed the most at the picture of that ceo trope Uh where it was finding or finding mr chi or something like that or loving mr chi but it was the actual like jiong ping (laughs) his head on top of a ripped white guy's body and he was like I was a commander of the People's Republic of China. China. <laughs> was the tagline. Yes. I was like, whoa, this one is all wild. about it. That yeah. is wild. <laughs> I couldn't that stop staring at that little copy of Basted Head yeah. on that body. Yeah, no, this, this list was, uh, was something... <laughs> And I mean, I think I think we all suffer from this. We suffer from it's difficult to write what you don't know in a way. So mm-hmm. obviously, we talk a lot about this before on this pod that female authors, when they write romance, they tend to have their main character look a lot like themselves. Yes, but maybe like a slightly better version of, or kind of more what you would like to look like. Sure, <laughs> you know, younger, mm. slightly you know slimmer, maybe and the bigger hair is assets, always uh, curled, <laughs> and the hair is just luscious. It's not yeah. always like thin, fine hair, you know. <laughs> like you know, and and if they have any flaws, it's gonna be a, a little bit of acne, maybe you know. But there's mm. like never really any actual flaws. Round, soft. Soft curves, chafed thighs. Yeah, but that, that's when we get into the plus side thing, mm. uh, which is, a, I think, is a... a but I, I find that that um, female authors, when they write romance, they will write their main character to look like themselves or like a, somewhat of a version of themselves. And then it's easy to write your female main character because you would just go in... How would I react in this situation? How would I think in this situation? And you can just write it. And then it comes across as real because it's actually based on on a real human being. Right. But then when you write the love interest or you you do like switch perspectives or whatever and you're in his head and then he thinks the exact same way as her, then, I mean, we get annoyed by those where you have a hard time following 
whose perspective you're on because they have too much of the same voice and they think they think the same things and they use the same words and it's like but who are we who are we listening, who are we listening to, to yeah. now? like who who is this and um, i see that actually a lot and yeah. i see it a lot in writers who have their own um slangs that they say a lot mm -hmm. like there's recently this author that i read like the four part series or five part series and she says stuff like she says ass a lot like my ass and kick ass and mm -hmm. up your ass and stuff like that as like her, her disses or mm -hmm. explanations of things or whatever the tips, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and all of the characters all say that whether they're female or male whether it's Which, I mean, this book that book that book inheriting slang from other people that you spend a lot of time with that I can get behind because obviously we're going to start talking a bit like our friends or our family because we get inspired by the people around us but mm. when it's like people that don't even know each other that still use the same then it gets a bit weird mm. but I actually read uh, I'm about to start reading now Maggie Steve Waters last, last one in her Dreamers trilogy the um, Grey Wear and in this book and I mean I can't even with her Her, she's so amazing. I love her so much. Mm. Um, and I don't. I know you haven't really read the, these books yet. The first one. Was, I just read uh, the Raven series. Yeah, but this one is after is the Call Down the Hawk. Is the first one I think. Yeah. No, uh, I and in it, there's a character, and she has copies of herself. And cool. after the first book was out, I think she gave it like a couple of weeks, and then she was on Magazine Four, and she was on social media, and she's like. No one has written to me, and I've been waiting for years now since I wrote this book and since it's been edited. I said, for you guys to pick up on the fact that one of these, like clones of this person, only one of them says crumbs, the other ones don't. Mm -hmm. And no one had picked up on it in the book, and she's just like waiting for people to read this and then pick up on the fact that only one of them says this, this very specific expression that no one did. <laughs> oh no. And, and I was like, but now when I read it, like book two and book three, like I see it all the time. Like, is it? really okay. stands out to uh. me because you pointed it out but, <laughs> but I think I mean that's even more like then you take the same character and you change it a bit and you, and and just that one's as crumb so when you do read these books you're gonna have to look out for the crumbs I love how into her own writing she is too like yes. but she's so good she's yes. such a good mm. writer But you know, we've read some good, we've read some bad and we have heard some bad voices and heard some good voices And I have recently found my new favorite male narrator ever mm -hmm. that I have ever heard. Actually, when I heard him speak for the first time, I immediately went, oh, this guy, this guy has a fantastic narr narrating voice. He is expressive and he does the breaths and everything. It's like he's acting in his part. But the book was garbage. I couldn't <laughs> listen to more than five minutes of it. So instead I clicked on his name and I looked at some other things that he reads. They're almost all uh, romances. And there's one called Enemies to Love Triangles. And I was like, this sounds like my favorite tropes all at one. But then when I looked at it, uh, popped into it, it says it's like book two. Enemies to Love Triangles. It's book triangles. four of a oh. series. They're all standalones. They're all in, in the family. But I don't know if I should go into the series or just hop into book four just because of this uh, author's voice. Do you want to hear him? Sure. You're about to listen to Jason Cockle. Other times, oh, she is a star. <laughs> Simone is the type of beautiful I fall hard for. The ethereal waif types. Like Bernie Lancaster and half a dozen other women who've held my balls in a sling. Tall, lanky blocks that look like they could be fairies. And All right, well, this might not be the best book either, but he has such a nice voice. I should have um, chosen which I was going to. Yeah, you should, should have done a little bit of uh, pre listening here. <laughs> I did not. Get... He, anyways, he has one that is a Minaj book I'm definitely going to listen to because I need to hear his voice in that kind of book. And then he, the one that I would li listen to was Hostile Takeover uh, that I couldn't continue listening to. Well, I read this book fairly recently called The Devil Makes Three by Tori Bovalino. Mm -hmm. And it's 
the main characters are like 16 and 18 or something like that. But the male narrator sounds like he's about 67 years old. So it's like <laughs> every time it came to it, like I had to, to like remind myself that no, it's not an adult. It's it's still like a young man speaking, and he says this, like it was it was terrible. So I think, and I, and I really started thinking: Do I actually know any eighteen year olds to have like an old man's voice? And I don't think I do. Do you know any? My sister's husband has had this deep, deep, deep voice for his whole life. I didn't know him when he was eighteen. I think I met him when he was like twenty one or twenty two, but. He definitely had an old man's voice at a young age. But I'm just wondering if I can play you some of this book, actually, because um, because she had such a young voice. And for the first time in her employment there, that's yeah, her. That's very she was late for work. Uh, and then it's him. I'm just going to see if I can find a chapter that's him. It might take me a little bit of... Because <laughs> they're not actually named, these chapters. Well, in the meantime, I will let you know that this The Golden Retriever book I read was called Consider Me by Becca Mack. Elliot. Elliot's head was fuzzy as he tucked himself back into the office and lit a candle in the window. First of all, I love that this is on 1.25 speed. Of course. (laughs) Of course. Is there any other way to listen to books? This is like going a little bit overboard. I will slow it down and you can hear it. You can go slow. How will I know what his voice sounds like? If his voice is like this, <laughs> and he's speaking so much. You fast. heard it. I did hear it. It was older. It was old. It didn't make sense. No. All right, fine. I'll slow him down. <clears throat> is 0.8? <laughs> okay, so this uh, Golden Retriever book is called Consider Me by Becca Mack. It mm-hmm. is a hockey romance-ish kind of thing. And he is very lovely throughout the entire thing and breaks all of those grumpy tropes. That being said, when I was looking for this book, I saw it as a PDF on Scribd. And I asked you, are they are the authors getting any cred for people who read PDFs of their books? And then I answered you, I assume, because it's yeah. in Scribd, that exactly. th- they should be, because this is like a, a service we pay for. We pay for this app. So I would have assumed that, yes, they would. But Exactly. And ha- like how difficult or easy is it just to upload stuff on these like big apps it should it shouldn't be that easy i don't think you can upload on stories i think it's just scribe that has to upload feature Mm -hmm. but i'm not sure but i wouldn't even know where to begin to upload like so instead of actually researching this myself i asked twitter (laughs) twitter knows everything so yeah and And some authors, some authors that we've read their books of also uh, commented saying that they looked at Scribe now and see their books are there as their own books, like that you can uh, Mm -hmm. listen to or read. And you, they also saw it illegally as PDFs. Okay. So this upload by some random person, as nice as they are sharing the book to the world, it is actually illegal. So report it when you see it. But I wonder what the upload feature is for then. Is it for like uh, reviews or is it for what is it for then? Like what's the purpose of having the upload feature if you're not actually allowed to upload stuff? Like what are you, you supposed to upload? You probably upload your own things. All right. But you can't upload somebody else's. Oh, fair enough. But I'm just, I'm just, I would like to have maybe clearer guidelines inscribed then as to what you can and cannot upload. And sure, and it definitely be... needs to be improved if if all of these authors are not getting credit for their for books that people are reading, especially this book because it like sort of blew up on Twitter by this girl who was sharing it that she thought this was the best mm-hmm. gold retriever book ever. Blah blah blah. And it made me want to read it. And I'm sure thousands of others also picked up that book because of what she said. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how many of those thousands found it illegally or bought it actually. I'm not sure. Do you want to know something else that bothers me that I found out last night? I saw Michelle Hercules on Instagram, you know, this author that mm-hmm. writes all of those awesome reverse harems that I love. Uh, she has the, and you know what? This girl, she's like cracked the code of being an author because not only does she write like super fun fantasy romances, mm-hmm. 
she has all models on her covers. Yeah. So she has to travel, or they have to travel around the world to find the right model for the book. Like, what? Do you travel to find the right model? She was in Hawaii, find... and then she was in London, and she was somewhere else, Australia. Which publishing house sends their yes. author on a trip to find See, models? Right. She has cracked the code. This is like the best job I have ever heard of. I could write hot smut all day long. And then eye candy models give them jobs, put them on the cover of my books. Girls swoon all over the world. They get more jobs because so many swooning all over the world. It's brilliant. Crack the code. Anyway, so I saw that she has one of the newest books out for free on Kindle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, zoop, go in. One click, buy it. And then it says, oh, just so you know, even though you have this like Amazon.com account, you are currently living in Sweden and therefore the parameters of this deal do not apply to you. It's like living in Quebec. Bullshit. Seriously. Have you tried living in Quebec? Yes. yes. <laughs> For like every years. single competition is all of North America and Canada, excluding Quebec. Literally, Every <laughs> single giveaway, every single competition, everything is always all of the excluding Quebec. <laughs> every single time. Quebec does it to itself, though. Yeah, but <laughs> me, as a person who lived there, did not do this no. to myself. No, that's true. It was very annoying. Okay, do you want to hear this at not the super speed? Yes. Mm. Something about Tess Matheson. Something he couldn't quite put his finger on. He couldn't tell if it terrified him or enchanted him. Yeah, he's 60. Yeah, no, he's 18. <laughs> oh, no. Mm, yeah. Okay, no. 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 No, he sounds like an old professor. Oh, it, he is not an old professor. He's 18. He's 18 in this book. Oh, that's not yeah, great. No, that's not, not good work. casting. No. I would love to Bad have casting. this job to cast. Oh, but you know, Anita, a friend of the pod, Anita, who's been uh, our guest host here a couple yeah. of times, she recorded herself reading a poem and she sent it to the author of the poem and they really liked it. And, and then they were doing like this audio, whatever, of poems on Spotify where they read all their poems aloud. Anita's wasn't included, but like, but they, she got the idea from there. And oh my God, I would like Anita to read books to me. Mm. I think we should just begin. She should just, we should just have her read all the books to us. Done. So Yeah. So um, she's away on vacation now, but when she's back, <laughs> yeah. we'll just put it to work. We'll just let her know she has a new job. <laughs> and it's she can just, just record it on time. our voicemail. She just needs to dial us both at the same, same time. time. And just record until, like, keeping in mind that it will, you know, cut off at some point. <laughs> and then just, you know, do it again until Continue. we have the whole book. Done. It's going to be great. It sounds super easy also. <laughs> <laughs> For us. <laughs> to do is listen to voicemails like how hard can it be it's gonna be great it's gonna be great i do love a good female narrator i have you know my favorite aaron mallon and now i have my favorite male patrick whatever his last name is that doesn't mm -hmm. read any good books unfortunately he only reads crap but 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 if i could reach out to the two of them and Listen to any kind of book. I will listen to them reading some medical journals. Seriously. I'm listening to... What are you reading right now? What are you currently reading? Okay. I had just, just, just finished a book. And <laughs> this is uh, what I wrote as a review. Uh, that it was a nice and cozy story. <laughs> Okay, but what are you calling? But it was called Accidental Tryst, and it was on my to-read list for some time. It is um, a British male narrator and English female narrator. The problem was that, you know, I have this issue with if you're going to place people in the world, you got to get it right. you got to get the terminology right. I know it doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. <laughs> it's just words. But, but <laughs> this guy was born and raised in Charleston. Mm -hmm. And Charleston has a very unique accent, the people who live there. And also way of life and like with the things that they believe in, a little churchy to that side of things, mm -hmm. okay? Not Mormon church. Not Mormon no, churchy. Okay. <laughs> Jesus-y. Jesus-y. Jesus okay. people. And uh, he gets ousted by the family. 
not exactly 100% sure why his mom was a bit of a whore, but I mean, that shouldn't really be a reason. No. And um, the father was British, so she follows him to England. He has no part of the kid's life other than he pays for the education. Mm -hmm. And then they move back to Charleston. And now he's going to take over the family company. But it bothered me so much that he lives in New York, raised in London, and has all his family in Charleston, and still, like, uses all of the, like, Charleston twang accent. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. You're, if you're brought up in England... And you have a British accent. Even if you lived there for a couple of years, you have a British accent. You know? <laughs> it takes over. It creeps up on you and then, Anyways, yeah, it's there. it's there. I don't love that side of books. It really brings me out of it. Like when a few weeks ago I read a book where this girl was a British writer and her female character was American, yet she was calling the stroller a pram the whole time. Mm, that's and I was like, it is not a pram. If somebody at all ever called it a pram near near my like family friends group i would be like what are you talking about <laughs> like what is a pram to you no you don't say pram for stroller it's a stroller but it's funny because it's there's so many words for like strollers and uh, pacifier yeah pacifier so is a pacifier i mean like we many. slang it and say sissy or stuff like that but that doesn't that's not what it's actually called but this what is it called in, if you have british like upbringing like a pacifier or like a soother or no it's called something else anyways B i would like B B no what is it i would like authors to really check their language their slang yeah their check your English. slang man check your check, check your, your words check check yourself, yourself before you wreck <laughs> yourself <laughs> all right what else what else are you, what are you what are you reading now if you finish that one what are you reading currently Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, I will mm -hmm. tell you exactly yeah, what I am yes. reading. You, I am, um, pins and needles. A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting. Oh, I like that. What is that? I actually think you will like it. Mm -hmm. It was named uh, 2022's Biggest Historical Debut, and uh, it's for Jane Austen lovers. And you know what I am? Not a Jane yeah. Austen lover. So the only reason I jumped into this was actually because my sister told me about it, and because Taylor Jenkins Reid which we had just read one of her books that we mm -hmm. loved. And I love all of her books. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, said that it was sharp, modern, and absolutely delicious. So I Yay! am currently reading uh, Taylor Jenkins' read, actually, Daisy Jones and the Six. Uh, and the only reason I'm reading this, and it's an actual book book, which is weird. And I got my little book light on here, too. Because nerd. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm no nerdy. I love this freaking book light, though. Um, it's because we went to a Japanese spa this weekend, and you are not allowed your phone. So I was like, get to need some reading material. Mm. Didn't actually read much. This is all read after <laughs> coming home from there. Okay. It reads so fast, this book. I don't actually like it. Oh. Um, it's uh, it's reading, uh, it's like, uh, it's about this band, Daisy Jones and the Sixth, but it's all like from, it's just different people saying stuff about things. So you get like different perspectives all the time. And there's like, there's like no story being told. It's all story told from snippets and it's kind of like an interview with like a bunch of people like the whole book but i will be done soon so you get to borrow it and read it um and then i just finished the atlas six which i think you're reading yeah so we should be talking about this at some point in the future because mm -hmm. there's lots to talk about in this book but i have to be in a place <clears throat> where i can actually hear it and listen to it that's why i have to pause listening to atlas and go on to something that i yeah, can be because background atlas with. six has a lot of narrators mm -hmm. as as i realized as i was listening to it uh the narrator that does um one of the voices i can't remember whose voice right now but one of the voices is um his voice just callum the narrator for callum his voice just uh if you're driving disappears into the engine it doesn't matter how high, how high you turn up the volume he has like the exact tone of his voice is at the exact same frequency as the car engine. So you can't hear what he says. It's really annoying. Um, <laughs> so then you have to re-listen to all of his chapters when you're done. Um, and then obviously I'm reading uh, Grey Ware and I already talked about that by um, 
Maggie Stiefwater, yes. which is the third one in the trilogy, and it just came out, so very excited. And I'm going to read the second part of Consider Me, that Golden Retriever book, because mm-hmm. it goes on to the next hockey player, and they all seem like good guys. Oh, Golden and Retriever. It sounds Boring, nice safe. To, <laughs> to listen to no a guy lows. that's like just so in love. Steady. They're so swoony. Yeah. So much communication. Oh, yeah, I actually so wrote in, <laughs> in my I actually wrote in my review of of Consider Me that it was a communication wet dream for me. Mm. Okay. Yeah, not my thing. Not my thing. All right. not Anyways, darkness. <laughs> these people are way too healthy. I don't relate. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Shadowlands. I told you about the this series uh, that I that is Savage Lands book six, and Savage Lands is this Marie, uh, Stacy Marie Brown, mm-hmm. and it was my favorite series of last year. And this year, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to get through book six, and I can't. I think I have been reading it for, like, four months. It's the worst when you get stuck in books like that. And then you just have to buckle down and just freaking power through it and finish it. I'm at 25%. Like, I'm listening, oh, like, I forgot ugh. to tell you, I'm listening to The Witches of New York as well. Oh. But honestly, could not tell you what the book is about, and I'm halfway oh. through it. And it's because... I find it like background noise. I find myself thinking and doing all sorts of other things while this book is going. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm listening to a book. I should probably pay attention. And I pay attention and I'm so lost. And I'm like, all right, I don't know who these people are or what they're doing. Try to pay attention. Thoughts wandering off. And then I was like, oh yeah, I was listening to a book. You know, this weekend I was at a christening and I was listening to the book in my ear. Mm -hmm. This very nice and sweet book. And uh, I walked into the church and I thought, can I continue? <laughs> like, is there a moral gray area here where no. I can continue to listen to my book well in a church? Anyways, I took the AirPod out and put it in my pocket. Good. Good. God would be judging you otherwise. God, I was judging myself. I'm like, Jerrica, come on. You're like, we're you here for the children. You can't be that addicted. Anyways, we're going to let you guys get back to whatever it is you're doing with your lovely days. Hopefully get back to reading because that's yes. what we'd all rather be doing. So. And try to find yourself a good golden retriever and make yourself happier than Leah can make herself while reading these books. Highs and lows, people. Highs and lows. Uh, also, if you don't like golden retrievers, I would <laughs> recommend some some other books. Uh, just ping me on social media. I'll got some recommendations for you. Anyways, until next time, <laughs> safe and happy reading. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Ceron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.